Well, I've had quite a bit of interest about uh, the motor and gearbox I've used. Um, so the gearbox is the standard smart gearbox with the auto um, selector on it and um, the brushless three-phase motor. So what I'm going to do is it would sort of be useful to take them out to put this switch in and put the cabling in. So it seems like a good excuse and a bit of a last chance really to drop this out of the car. There's only four bolts that hold it in so it's really easy to do. Um, and just take it apart really and run through it and just show exactly what I've done, how I've connected this onto the gearbox. Just taking the chassis out of the car and uh, I've just unbolted three bolts here that I've made to that plate. Bolt there and a bolt there. So this is ready to come out really. Uh, just needs to take the strain a bit more on the motor and then drop those bolts out. So the hard bit to get out is going to be the drive shafts themselves. Okay, so that's just hanging from the chain now. So I'm hoping that I can just drop it right through and then pull out the drive shafts, but they might not let me down. Give me that much play, we'll see. Right, with a small bit of wrestling with the drive shafts, I was able just to get the angle on them enough to pull them straight out. So that was really useful. So I can now bring this up. A bit of cardboard to protect the car. Okay, so I should be able to pull this out now. There we go. Okay, a bit more space there. Choose the right size spanner. Okay, so some of these holes in here are tapped and some are clearance. What I should be able to do is get some plates under there and then upend it. Better. Right, okay, so it's on its end and ready to lift off. What I should have done was done this first and then I could have easily undone all the screws. There we go. Okay, so that's the gearbox, uh, spline which is exactly the same as an old British Mark I Escort, 18 spline I think. Uh, and then this plate is a Mark I Escort um, disc, uh, Mark I Escort clutch plate. And I've just cut off the, drilled out and cut off the actual gripper plate itself. So that fits perfectly. Okay, let's loosen those off. Should pop out there quite easily. Okay, so what I did here was it's a clutch plate from a Mark One Ford Escort, a UK well, Ford Escort and uh, I cut the plate off, drilled the pieces out 
and then had to replicate those lugs that I cut out with some spacers, which I've just put in there, and that sort of built the plate back up. So this is permanently connected to this plate, which is connected via a taper lock, which I think has the same screw size, yeah. So a taper lock is a great way of connecting something to a plane shaft or a keyway shaft. You can, just with a couple of screws, you tighten it back up with this screw and that releases it off of the taper. There we are. Still going to be a good fit on the shelf though. No, I can't get hold of that. There we go. Right. So, keyway. Taper lock that comes off in two parts. I should be able to show that. There we go. So this is a standard flange taper lock. I uh, can't remember what size, and the taper lock bush. That's a 1610-118. I think it was a inch and an eighth shaft. So that's the 1610 is obviously the size of the taper lock, and then one and an eighth for the shaft itself. So the shaft on this motor is really short. I think uh, the motors come with different shafts different end styles and different face plates. So what I found was best with this one is this is a Suzuki Vitara, I think, brake disc. This had perfect outer diameter for what I needed to fit onto the gearbox. And then I just needed to plan those holes out. So I marked those out with a sheet of paper on there and then measured them and then um, CNC'd those out. And then I picked up on the four bolts of the motor using some tubes and then straight onto this plate. So strange material, it's not ideal in many ways, um, but as long as I've got washers and bolts going through it, it's going to be absolutely fine. So that gave me the right offset that I needed to put that taper bush in. Let's just go to the motor itself. Okay, let's have a look at the parts themselves. So, main bit, shift it out of the way. Okay, so the motor is uh, an HP EVS motor. Um, it's an AC35 type, um, dash 01, not sure what the 01 means, but normally 72 volts, but you sh we can run these over voltage. It's, it's the current that really matters, current control, and that's all done by the Curtis controller. So, this particular one that the voltage I'm going to run at, which is about 100 volts, should give me the same kind of torque as the original engine, uh, except for zero RPM. So it should outperform the old engine in terms of its torque capabilities. Where it's going to run out is at the higher RPM. Um, I'm going to lose out a bit there, so I'm probably not, well, I'm not going to have the top speed of the original engine. But uh, it should still be fun anyway. So motor itself is three phase. Um, um, with an encoder at the end, so the controller uses that for speed control uh, feedback. It's vented, it's vented through the motor uh, for cooling, but there's no other external cooling on it. And then what I've done is connected that, uh, to the disc, which is um, obviously interfacing to the gearbox uh, and this disc was just right for doing that. Okay and then next was the gearbox. Now the gearbox is the standard Roadster gearbox. This one I bought second hand uh, and I don't think it's in particularly good condition. It's quite rattly, there's no oil in it at the moment but nevertheless it, it sounded bad when I first kind of 
rotated it. Um, it's also leaking a bit on the back end, which I'll sort out before I put it all back together. So these have a motor selector, DC motors driven selector with encoder on, which I've driven uh, and shown in a previous video in the very early stages. And on the end of the selector shaft is a very effectively a variable resistor, which gives the definitive position or the definitive gear that it's actually in. So this is six speed gearbox, um, as I say, with a motor driven selector on it, which theoretically should be fine. Although once I know what speed I actually need or what gear I need, um, which it performs best in, I might just take all this off, take all the old gears out that I don't need and uh, just use it effectively as a simple gear and diff. Obviously integrated diff on the back end there, so I'll put new seals in that. Um, and that's, that's kind of it really. So I'll put this back together and just show the procedure for doing that. Okay, so we'll put this back together. I've just done another video actually um, about this gearbox. Uh, separately about taking it apart so have a look at that if you're interested in that um, okay so just to run through these parts again so this is a taper lock bush inch and eighth shaft um, so i've made this aluminium housing which interfaces the clutch plate onto the taper lock bush so that just locates on there so i just need that keyway back in first for sure I've made the keyway a very tight fit just to make sure there's no chance of it coming out Okay, so I just need to get the gearbox on now. So I've got the cut out there which lines up with that. So that can go straight back on. I'll put some bushes into the plate to give it some location. So Okay, so I've just slid the motor in underneath and now I'm going to battle with it a little bit to try and get those drive shafts in. They should just knock in, in theory. Just got a clip on the end of them. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, so I'll put this back in the car next, but please subscribe if you want to see more and uh, leave any comments if you want to ask any questions and I'll see if I can answer them. Uh, okay, until next time.